Hi everyone, my name is Sam and welcome to the second episode of a series on this channel I simply call Technology. A show where I show you anything technology related, whether it be old or new. For this episode, I'll be attempting to create a DIY skid plate for this HSP RC car. I've owned this car for 11 or so years now. And throughout the time, I've just done little modifications to it. Like I've put different shocks on. And I've also put sway bars on. You might be able to see there, there's sway bars in the back, sway bars in the front. And this car doesn't come with um, sway bars. Although they have the, they've got the mounting holes there. So what I'll do is I'll show you the reason why I'm thinking of making a skid plate. Is right about here we've got some some gal not not seriously gouges but you know we're getting some damage up here in the front and if you're wondering what this is uh that's in a this is a test piece i've just grabbed some of the stainless steel that i want to make the the skid plate from i've added it just to see what the thickness is like it, it's just a scrap piece so I've also drilled a countersunk hole for that uh, stainless steel as well. And it seems to fit. It seems to do, do, do quite well. So my idea would be is to have the, the plate going something around like, like that. Maybe screwing into these holes. And, and I'm going to use the existing mounting hardware to screw the plates on. I thought about adding some more. But... No, I, I don't think that's necessary. Because the stainless steel plate is going to be so thin, it's still going to allow the screws to, to grab where they need to. Well, that's the plan anyway, so hopefully it works. The first thing I'll do is um, I'm going to take off the chassis and then I'm going to make a cardboard template of what I want to create out of metal. What I'll do is, I'll get started on that. Okay, so here I am removing the chassis so that I can make the template. I just want to say, um, thanks for watching so far, and please consider subscribing. That would help me out a lot. Thank you. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cardboard template with the with the plastic chassis. So what I'll do is I'm just going to trace around it. I'm just going to hold it down the best I can and sort of just trace around that there. And I want to sort of come out to about there. And what I'll do is... I'll draw a bit of a line here. Use the ruler and sort of draw it like a bit of a straight line. All right, and what I'm going to do is cut that out the best I can. If I trace this directly onto the stainless steel I have, if I make a mistake, I can't really fix it. So that's why I always prototype something with cardboard first. Because also I don't have any fancy like laser cutters or special tools. You know, I've just got, I've got tin snips. That's it. I've got tin snips, a drill, and a couple of other things. First time I've tried to make an RC skid plate. But I mean, it, it should be fairly straightforward. Just making it easier for myself. I may not have these these little lip parts here. I may actually not have those on the stainless steel, but I'll because they'll be quite hard to cut out. But I could actually cut them out, then use a file to round them off. There's the front template. So my idea behind leaving a little bit at the front here was so that I could actually make that a lip as well. So that would protect the front part. I'm not worried about the holes at the moment. Okay, so I went ahead and made the the rear one as well. And I've got this piece of scrap stainless steel that's seen better days. But 
it's um, still stainless steel and I, I should be able to to clean it up qu quite well uh, I'm not not too worried about how it looks right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some sellotape to actually stick down the cardboard so it doesn't move perfect but I, I'm quite happy with how it fits on the the chassis put that there right there now what I'll do is I'll I'll line it up so that we get that edge there so go down about there that should be good and then I'm trying to actually to because I, I also I have got another project that I'm hoping I can use a long strip of that for since that's stuck down I, I want to use this pen to just perfectly draw around the the cardboard area and then what I can do is when I cut it out if I cut on the inside of the line the dimension should add up just draw a line up here should be able to get away with just one all right and there we go oh, also by the way if you are interested in the actual sway bars the sway bars are actually Azidi Racing branded sway bars and pretty much the only thing you have to do is find the the grub screw that goes in here that holds on that arm because you you actually get this little arm here that comes up and the grub screws and stuff you just got to find the one that go the, the, the long one it's the HSP they're, they're common on like AliExpress and stuff like that but what you do have to DIY yourself are these little mounts here. Now these little screws, I'll put up on the screen what they are now. Basically they, there's four holes there. So you'd have to DIY something like what I've done here with, with, with this aluminum plate. And you just sort of screw it in when it's done. And that, that holds the sway bars on. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll just carefully take off the the templates and we should be left with something that I can cut out with the tin snips and some, some other tools I'm going to use a, a few different tools tin snips maybe a hacksaw so I'm going to hold on to these template things just in case I could could use them for something else so I'll hang on to those so now what we'll do now is we'll move out into the shed or the workshop and I will start to cut out these skid plates. Okay, so here we are in the workshop and I'm going to try and cut this out a little bit. What I, what I do want to do is try and cut it so that I, I, I can keep a strip down this way. I'll try cutting down here first. I'm going to use the Okay. And get that cut. Proving to be quite the challenge, to be honest. Alright, well, this is probably going to take a bit more force than, than I thought. So I'll pause the cameras here and I'll come back once I, I have it re relatively cut out. But I managed to cut them. Uh, it's a bit bent, but that we don't have to worry about that. that. That can all be straightened out once it's all been cut. Cut it, I actually had to turn to this guy right here, which is good. I was able to just stick it on the floor and then just... And I've also got these uh, tin snips here for doing some detail. I'll, co I'll continue uh, attempting to cut this here. I don't, yeah, I, I don't think I can actually do it up on the bench. I have to actually do it on the ground. Do a little bit here at least. I'll get, I'll get this all cut out the best I can, and then, and then we'll come back. I managed to cut off quite a lot of the material. I just need to figure out how I'm going to cut out these parts here. I don't, I don't think I really want to use the tin snips. I might use the tin snips for some of it, but I may have to uh, try a different method. 
but I, I can get that all flat. I can get it all flattened out. I can I can file off the burrs and do my best to, to do that. I think that that would be best if I started the video again once that's done. And then I can start to plan out where exactly I'm going to drill the holes. Okay, so unfortunately I, um, I struggled with this. So I, I couldn't cut that off. I, I thought I could do it. Um, I can't cut these out so I'm gonna have to change the design what what I'm thinking is that maybe all of this is probably not necessary plus I, I could get um, w once this is all flattened out of course I mean I, I was gonna spend the time to flatten it all out ma make it look nice and I could also round off those edges for the file but because I can't cut these I'm just going to change the design and what I'll do is I'll just have a, a square like that I know I might be able to reuse this this metal but we'll see what happens I'm gonna just use the cardboard uh, templates I've already got and I'm just gonna add in a piece here and we'll see what happens and I'll restart the video once I've actually got those pieces cut out so I got it um, the best I could I've changed the design. I decided to go for a much smaller one, just because you know I, the weight. It's stainless steel. It's a bit. It's got a little bit of weight to it. I think adding the big design that I had was going to be too heavy and probably catch on a lot of things and get dirt underneath it and stuff. So also, you know, I couldn't cut it out. I couldn't cut this thing. And you know, like the amount of cuts I did to get this was. These are all the pieces of metal. These are all the cuts I made to get that. Not not my proudest moment, but uh, you know, we got there in the end. It is a very hard metal to work with. That that's um, I mean, it, it's stainless steel. It's not al aluminum. So yeah, the next step will be to to actually put the the markings where the holes will go. I'm still sort of every now and then I'm just sort of a lot of making it as f flat as I can. So it looks like the project's still going to go on, which is good. Now how I'm going to mark the holes, I'm going to figure out w which way I want it to go. So I'll probably have it go dead in the front. So have it that way there. Right, so what I'm going to do is flip it up like that. I'm going to grab a little bit of tape. This is not a tutorial, by the way. I, I, I would not follow anything that I do. I still want a lip that I can bend up in the front. So the reason I'm putting the tape down is just so it doesn't move when I... Well, it kind of doesn't move. It's still moving. Yeah, it didn't stick. Let's just tape it all up, shall we? There we go. So I really don't want that to move because drilling holes like this, it's um, it's absolutely crucial that the hole alignment is exactly perfect. All right. So n now that that's like stuck there, I can mark out where I want the holes to go. Okay. So I've got those stuck down. Now I do have a little problem. I've covered up the little little holes to go through so I'll just pop those out with a um, scriber so what I'm going to do now is use the pen and hopefully draw through and mark exactly the center point of each hole so we'll go through and just do that there I'll do this one now okay it's about right yeah, if, they, if they get the holes misaligned or anything like that, when you screw the screws in, it's going to make a tension. And it's actually going to cause more damage to the car than you're trying to actually solve. Alright, so now that those those are done, I can actually get rid of that. I'll get rid of the tape. And then you'll see that I've got markings on there. 
that should perfectly represent the center of the holes and as long as I can keep everything centered from this from this point on it, everything should line up what I'll do is I'll put that plate down there and then I'm just gonna go through with the center punch and try my best to put a center punch right in the center of each dot there just like that that's all I need but what I'm gonna do is I'll probably turn the video off and I'll do all of these and I'll come back once I've got uh, the drill bit. Alright, so I've put the center punch and punched all the holes that I need uh, perfectly in the center of each dot. That's, that's going to be really important. Um, what I'm going to do is just test the volume with the drill for the mic. Uh, that should be okay. Now I've also got this piece of wood. I'll be using that. Um, and I'll be holding the the skid plates with these pliers while I drill it. Now hopefully I can all right, just make sure the drill's spinning, spinning the right way. And I'll be cutting like that. But what I'm gonna do is I've actually got this lubricant for the drill. Because I'm because I'm cutting into the stainless steel, I'm gonna put a little drop of that on there and hopefully I can drill through it but the thing is with drilling through stainless is you want to go slow slow as you can hmm. it's a thin piece of metal well we just keep going keep in mind that this is just one hole this is the first hole Tell you what, I'm going to change the location. I need to go into the into the other workshop. The, this bench is a little bit too high. I'll put it on time lapse mode, and I'll just time lapse the whole thing. Otherwise, we're going to be here for hours. Okay, so now that I moved into the other part of the shed, I was able to put a little bit more pressure on the drill, allowing me to to drill the holes through and surprisingly uh, I got through each hole it didn't take that long to drill and I ended up drilling all 12 holes successfully here we go I've managed to get the holes drilled the first couple of holes were quite hard but once I moved to that other bench the holes drilled drilled quite nicely and strangely the drill bit actually got sharper I, these last holes here actually cut through quite fast so the drill bit didn't get blunt it um thankfully it, it it actually got sharper now i've put x's on the bottom here that's so i know that's the bottom i want to do i want to drill a countersink on, on this side so this is a 90 degree countersink these screws however this is an example screw that's from the motherboard I mean from the uh, the chassis when you call a uh, RC car chassis a motherboard you uh, you know that the other hobby is, is definitely computers now so what I've got to do is put that I don't know if you can see that on camera you should be able to but the screw is actually popping up a little bit you you don't want that because you imagine driving over like stones and little bits of grass and this would catch and, and just rip the screw off basically so they're actually countersunk screws now this I found out that this is actually a British Imperial 100 degree countersink this is only a 90 degree I went to the store to try and buy a 100 degree one but they didn't have one what I'm doing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill some of the whole some of the countersink with this and I'm going to finish it off with this big drill bit because th this seems to do a, a real nice job. So you don't use a drill bit to create a countersink. It doesn't work. You'll end up with a big lopsided ugly hole. At, at, at most you can use a drill bit to take off the burr and that's about it. So what I'm going to have to do is I'll use the cutting fluid again and I'll just I'll countersink all these holes and uh, until they're at the right depth and then I'll I will use the drill bit to finish them all off 
taken. Basically, once I've done that, we'll probably I'll go back I'll go back into my studio room and we can assemble it because by then it, it should be done. So yeah, hopefully we can make this project still work. <laughs> So I thought we would have been finished in here, but I realized that I um, I actually needed to bend up the front lip. Now, I didn't leave too much there. I, I, I could have probably left a bit more, but that's all right. I'm, overall, I'm pretty happy with how they've turned out so far. It is stainless steel, so it's very hard metal to work with. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll put, a, I'll put a line here where I want to do the bend. So I'm just going to put that in the vise and try and line it up. I've only got one shot at this, so I kind of want it to go pretty good. I'd say that's about right. So I'll, I'll do it up a bit. Now, I've got this piece of wood here. And hopefully what I can do is put that piece of wood like that. And then put the bend in without... <clears throat> hopefully that's going to work. doesn't seem to be working the way I wanted it to. I might have to use a hammer. I'll just see, get that down a bit more. Oh, how loud is that going to be? Way too loud. Alright, um, I'll stop this and then I'll work on it. Then we'll go back into the studio. Okay, welcome back to the studio everyone. Um, so I completed the skid plates. I'm actually pretty happy with how they turned out. They're um, uh, they got got to the point there in the in this in the creation process that I just thought maybe this wasn't gonna work out very well at all. But I decided to redesign it, and um, yeah. So now we've got two really cool uh, skid plates, and they're stainless steel. They've got the countersunk holes for the screws to go into. So those are the screws there. They'll just sit like that. So they sit flush and they're not going to get damaged by like stones or... Um, also, really neat thing happened. But if you look, you can actually see there's... We've got a, a positive countersink that occurred on all of the holes. That's really neat. Because what that allows me to do is I've just got this temporarily um, screwed in at the moment. I've got, only got this being held in by a couple of screws. I, I put it back together to create the thumbnail picture. So what this allows me to do is actually, uh, it may not show up, they actually, the positive counter actually goes into the countersink of the chassis. And it sits in there really nice. So when the screw goes in there, it all sort of sits together really well. I wasn't expecting that to happen, but, you know, it did. Um, something else I also did off camera was just to file off, you can't really see it that well, I just gave a bit of an, an edge to that, that back part because that's the part that's going to be sitting here. So I wanted whatever, I didn't want anything to like catch under this, I want that to be completely, have a slight angle on it. I did the same to the front even though it probably didn't need it. So that's relatively what it's going to look like. So what I'll do is I will um, I'll put the cameras back onto time lapse mode and then I will put them on, put it all back together, and then I'll do one last um, show of the car and um, that'll be that. So that's it. I've successfully completed making the skid plates for the bottom. So some of it is actually like a couple of the screws are actually 
just ever so slightly raised up a little bit too high so I might off camera I might go and actually fine tune some of the depth of the holes it's not too bad like it's only coming up about half a millimeter so given the tools that I had to use I'm, I'm quite impressed getting six holes to line up like that without without using a drill press or anything like that is quite good especially with stainless steel that's why I took the time to make sure that my center punches were perfect because that center punch that you do that determines the position of the hole if you have that center punch a third of a millimeter off your hole is going to be not aligned what will happen is if one hole is not aligned you can imagine that this is stainless steel and the screw is going into plastic so what's going to break first you know all that force of the unaligned stainless steel is going to cause the plastic to actually break so it's quite good I'm, I'm really pleased with, with how that looks it looks really good and plus being stainless steel it's a lot stronger than aluminum what else is going to address so this channel is not a hundred percent a radio controlled cars or RC stuff I, I like to just to show some things of RC cars but I I kind of want to move into a, a wider area not not just not, not like a lot of random stuff I want to sort of have it structured I, I you know I want to stick to my, my my series of technology and that's why I've been able I feel like I'm able to slot this in into the technology series because it's like radio controlled it's RC this channel isn't just going to be radio controlled stuff so if you subscribe just for RC just know that a lot some videos are not going to be radio controlled things I, I only have two RC cars you know so and I want to have a real good attempt at YouTube to see what would happen and I just don't have enough RC content to make that happen so I need to sort of vary my uh, my content but still have it under uh, a good context so my channel is, is sort of consistent so yeah I just wanted to put that out there this brings us to the end of the video if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down if you want to see more content like this feel free to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.